Hi, everybody. Here's some news. Here we are. Here's some core and teens news. It's um not a hoax. And we're going to get through this together. We just have to ride this out inside for a while and avoid large crowds, which is why I'm doing this week's episode and a lot of future episodes without my usual studio audience, who quite frankly never seem to love the show to begin with. But if we stick to this, then hopefully this coronavirus doesn't become a big, stupid problem. Do we have a clip of people riding this out inside so it doesn't become a big, stupid problem? And one of the one of the questions that we were asked here earlier was whether or not the beaches were going to be impacted by what's going on here with uh, with coronavirus in the state of Florida. By the by the looks of it, this looks to be a pretty busy yes. day here at the beaches. Mm, yeah. OK, cool. You enjoy that spring break. So we're going to be dealing with this for a while. And like the economy is crashing and a lot of people are losing work and can't afford health care. And this is so different without the audience just staring at me disapprovingly. Hold on, Twitter. Eat Tom Hanks. If you think that I won't brave this hellscape slum city and come to your douche chateau and dislodge your perfect teeth, you clearly don't know me, you loathsome dirt bag. Speaking of Tom Hanks, we have some good news. You know all those rich celebrities that are always interacting directly with and touching the population all the time? Well, they are all getting tested for coronavirus, despite whether they're feeling symptoms or not, because of money. Money letting people take private coronavirus tests. Money that we should maybe not have anymore because it's fake. Money is fake. Anyway, good for those celebrities. Do we have a clip? Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us. Ah! Those pretentious chords! Anywho, so if you're stuck inside and don't have a job anymore and your family members are really vulnerable to the virus and you're losing your mind, just remember that Ron Burgundy told you to imagine that there isn't religion and you'll be fine. So thanks guys for telling the poors to imagine life without the thing that's comforting to people during hard times. Or if you're really on edge, all the latest cinema movies are coming out early. Like, the Trolls World Tour and Rise of Skywalker. The good, the, it's good. Look, I promise I'll find a way to liven the mood here, but it's, it's, it's a kind of a time to be angry. It's okay to be angry sometimes. We have an entire puppet devoted to that idea. I, had, we had a puppet. He was, you know, he's pretty old, living on the streets, and no one helped him for some reason. So, you know, not a great f***ing situation to be in when there's a stay-at-home pandemic. Or ever. And even after that, they still probably won't close the Sesame Street because of whatever nightmare version of spring break that Muppets have. Speaking of dead children's entertainers, Jesus, this just, this just keeps getting darker. Remember what Mr. Rogers used to say about looking for the helpers when you get scared? Well, we should absolutely do that. But also, I don't know, maybe maybe also look for the sh bags who pissed all over our sorrowed faces during this time of need in a brand new and totally rad segment called Looking for the Fuckers. I know, guys. If you're consuming entertainment right now, it's most likely to relax and not to get more angry. And I get it. I get it. And it's far more constructive to focus on the people who are going above and beyond to help in this time of crisis, otherwise known as every medical professional, grocery store clerks, anyone who has to keep going out and working every day this is happening. Absolutely phenomenal. I hope that everyone working in those fields from the surgeons to the custodial staff are staying safe right now. You are objectively heroes. And we should be using this crisis to recognize and celebrate them and also to come together in general, call our friends and family, find common ground, help our neighbors. But also, 
quietly write down a list of the people and corporations who didn't do that, and then seriously hold those entities accountable for it, so that future folk will never make the mistake of f***ing crossing us. Do you hear that, Boars? Huh? I know you're listening. I know you're listening. Yeah? Yeah? So, despite what happens in the future, one business you should never ever go to is GameStop. And not just because their trade-in system is gross and that they've been bad to their employees forever. No, it turns out that they have braved the coronavirus threat in order to force their employees to continue working, even in places where businesses have been shut down and despite failing to provide any additional cleaning supplies. When one employee asked, what would happen if a store got infected with the virus? They were told that they would simply clean the space and then replace the staff with healthy people. Presumably inspired by tower defense games where you burn through disposable pawns. And if the cops come to shut the stores down, the employees, who by the way are making minimum wage, which is also currently too low, have been instructed to resist their orders. So... Yeah, we'll probably see some kind of apology by the time this video comes out, but, uh, you know, too late, brah. Oh, there it is. They're closing the stores. Too damn late. Your already not so great image has slipped off in this time of need, like if Jason Voorhees' mask fell off to reveal that he was Rand Paul the whole time. Oh, that reminds me of another person we should be talking about. Rand Paul, who, when Congress was trying to pass their coronavirus stimulus package, decided to hold up the entire process by introducing an amendment that would block people without social security numbers from getting some of the aid, or as he put it, My amendment says that if you want to apply for money from the government through the child tax credit program, this is money that the government gives to people, that you have to be a legitimate person. You have to have a social security number. Wow, Rand. You're quite the goddamn racist drag. I hope he gets, aw, oh, geez, I was gonna say I hope he gets voted out of office, but that is also fitting. Wow, he probably touched Mitch McConnell and a bunch of other politicians. What a shame. But don't worry, Rand, your dad thinks it's a hoax, so you'll be totally fine. Anyway, we were talking about racism. Did you forget about racism? Because it didn't forget about you. Our president is doing his part, actually crossing out the word corona and replacing it with Chinese in his speeches, implying that internally they call it the coronavirus, but they're pushing Chinese because of their bizarre culture war racist dog sh and of course, people, specifically the official White House Twitter account, are arguing that it totally can't be racist because we had other names like Spanish flu and West Nile virus that were named after other things. And number one, arguing something isn't racist because we did it in the past is like not a good argument. And two, Spanish flu didn't actually come from Spain. So maybe Google that before you tweet. And the three that sweet number three, is that we had already started calling it coronavirus. That's, that's, that's the name we gave it. And they are trying to rebrand the name to be racist. Like, you know how conservatives get so mad about changing pronouns and using more PC language and they swear it's not because they're prejudiced because why, why we gotta always change words and junk? Well, it's interesting that those same people are more than happy to change the name of the virus despite all of us already calling it one thing in order to make it more racist. That, apparently, is worth the effort. The entire world economy is now stopped dead, like completely stopped dead. All because China would not shut down the practice of people eating freaking bats at the local markets. This has been a problem for, for decades, okay? This is nothing new. Huh, yeah, that, that's true. Racism is nothing new, Ben. Oh, and hi, Ben. Did you like when all the famous liberal elites sang Imagine? Because I, uh, didn't either. 
So maybe we can hang out when this is all over. Just, just you and me against the world, brothers forever. You can come share my toilet drain, Ben. Hey, Ben, did you hear about all the new hate crimes against the Asian community because of this, Ben? Friend Ben, you hear? You want to let your buddy Andy know in on all those hate crimes? You know how he hates those and always tweets them out? And weird, those tweets are always about alleged Antifa members or liberal-leaning people doing the crimes. Anyway, surely this story about a woman being punched in New York because she was Asian will make your long Twitter list blasting out stories of people being attacked. Oh, nope. Ah, it's just you tweeting about LGBTQ bars being bad and defending racism and all that other stuff you do when you're a hack who only cares about crimes that fit your specific lie. God, why am I talking about these sad grifters? Is it like for a taste of normalcy? To feel alive again? To brush elbows with the godly smite that I so desperately need in this boar-dominated world of disease? Did you know that germs can travel from your feet all the way up your body and into your mouth while you sleep? They're little creatures like everything else. They can think and love and destroy, and that's why we burn the shoes. We burn the legs. Ah. Golly, there I go putting out misinformation about the virus. Now here's a totally unrelated series of videos nine days apart that are super unrelated to what I just said. Weird that we're gonna play it r randomly. They're scaring the living hell out of people and I, I see it again as like, oh, let's bludgeon Trump with this new hoax. Yeah, and I think what we're looking kind at- kind of laugh at it, but not to laugh at here. By the way, this program has always taken the coronavirus seriously, and we've never called the virus a hoax. Oh, yeah. F*** me up, Fox News. Weird how you're still allowed to be a news station considering that you regularly put out misinformation about serious issues, deny that you did that, and then do it again having learned nothing. Weird how conservatives are always wrong about things and have to pivot around that fact, blaming others without any self-reflection, Newt, who when a reporter asked why conservatives were so skeptical of the virus news, put exactly zero effort towards self-awareness and blamed the liberal media as opposed to their general denial of science or history of being wrong all the time. Like, weird how there's an entire political party that is constantly on the wrong side of history about workers' rights and human rights, and yet we still listen to them and their news shows. I don't know, it's just, it's just strange. Strange that when the country hit a crisis, those same people immediately adopted ideas they were calling socialist a month earlier because they knew it would actually actually help. So strange. Gosh, who else sucks? Oh yeah, McDonald's tried to fight the part in the coronavirus bill where companies had to give paid sick leave to employees. Their argument being that it would hurt their franchises, who I guess would be made to absorb the cost and not like the larger corporation, despite it not needing to be like that. Although, according to one manager, that isn't even a little true. Last week, I was under the weather. I was sick to the point where I had to leave the grill to go to the restroom, and I wound up vomiting. And I could have been sent home with paid sick leave and not have to worry about coming to work sick because I don't have to worry about how my bills are going to get covered for the days that I missed. Hello, McFamily. Last week, McDonald's did roll out a coronavirus plan stating that anybody that's quarantined will be paid. Protecting the well-being of our people and our customers is our number one priority. But you guys, don't be fooled. That's only for corporate-owned McDonald's. But 95% of McDonald's are franchise stores, including my store. So that does not benefit us whatsoever. Ah! Okay, so not actually concerned about the franchises after all. Got it. But also, that new family's first Coronavirus Emergency Response Act only gives sick leave to people who work for companies with less than 500 employees, which puts most American employees, specifically 7.4 million of them, in the old uncovered zone. The assumption being that those larger companies would handle their own employees. You know, like what McDonald's isn't doing. So shucks, maybe don't go to McDonald's anymore, but I guess go work at Amazon instead? You know, that place that's so regularly great to their employees. Go huck boxes, you poor f 
I'm sure you won't be massively laid off when this is over. Don't worry, all the rich CEOs are here to help. Musco is gonna make those ventilators. You know, only if there's a shortage. Also known as right now, all the time. Also, maybe don't wait until there's a shortage of something life-saving before you make the thing that's needed when there's a shortage. But he's totally making them now because his cars have HVAC systems, so he's an expert, even though those are fundamentally different from the ventilators we're actually talking about. I wonder who he's gonna call a pedophile this time. Anyway, I'm sure he'll ship off some masks and stuff. So thank you, Elon. Any comment? Look, it's neat that some of these rich people are at least wanting to help, but most of this stuff is going to be as flaccid and off the mark as a bunch of celebrities singing Imagine. These people don't have our backs, and the government shouldn't rely on them to do the right thing. We didn't elect people to politely ask Amazon to give out sick pay, but rather make laws that ensure we don't have to ask. Just, just do the things. The things that will help. And stop assuming the f***ing CEOs will bail their workers out. Because they won't. The compassion of these giant companies is solely dictated by the amount of shame and good PR they get. Nothing else. But of course, all that, just an appetizer. Just a taste of the delicious rat f sandwich, I'm loving it, that is chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Richard Burr. Back in the days when Trump and Fox News were calling the virus a hoax before having to pretend like they didn't do that, Burr was getting regular updates on the COVID spread. And during that same time where everyone was telling us not to worry, secretly warned his wealthiest constituents that things were actually going to get pretty bad, saying in a secret recording, now not so secret, quote, it is much more aggressive in its transmission than anything that we have seen in recent history. Because you know, rich folk gotta stick together. Class solidarity. He then quietly sold off $1.7 million in stock because he knew the market would collapse. Because he's evil and should go to jail. And even Bucker Corona Man agrees with me. Now maybe there's an honest explanation for what he did. If there is, he should share it with the rest of us immediately. Otherwise, he must resign from the Senate and face prosecution for insider trading. Even Buckums, the guy who still calls it Chinese coronavirus, on the channel where they called the dangerous virus a hoax and maybe shouldn't be a news channel anymore. But don't worry, Cody, there was actually a whole handful of lawmakers who quietly did this right before the pandemic. Because again, rich folk. This guy, Senator Jim Inhofe, claims that selling his $180,000 worth of stocks was just a coincidence. Also a coincidence, he voted against the coronavirus response bill aimed at helping Americans, also known as, uh, people. Presumably while saying, hey, why can't they just sell their stocks like us normal people do? So in short, get your pens out and go ahead and write down the names Richard Burr, Jim Inhofe, Kelly Loeffler, and Dianne Feinstein. Put that list in your pocket, or maybe your wallet. Maybe frame it if you, you know, have the time. And perhaps ask your representatives when those people will, um, go to prison and ask them all the time, again and again. I'm just, I'm, I'm just so mad. Like, like, have you even noticed that the official website for the film K-Pax is still running? I sure did, but did you? Did any of you? You can download screensavers and read facts about the movie, and for some reason, every time you click anything, it like, plays a random snippet of dialogue from K-Pax? The movie you all remember. <laughs> Why was I talking about this? Why was I talking about k -Pax? Does anyone remember? Was there like a, a tangent about sex offenders? I, I need nourishment to think. It's 
so good. That's better. That's so much better. My lord, we haven't even talked about the lack of tests and how we don't know who exactly has the virus. We haven't talked about the fact that the company making ventilator parts are allegedly threatening to sue medical volunteers for 3D printing their product so that they can stop people from dying. Of course, they are denying this now, though, to be fair, and k -packs. Okay, who is still paying to keep that website up? What vast underbelly have I unearthed? What what time is it? What? It's six in the morning. Is time a lie? Should we abolish time along with money? Evangeline Lilly is bringing her kids to gymnastics camp because she apparently doesn't like old people. Everything is doing great. Aren't you all happy we tied our healthcare to our jobs? What a good system. And gee, I wonder if there's like anyone we could elect that might change that because he's been pointing it out for decades. Hey, did you know that one of the insurance companies making money off of testing centers was founded by Jared Kushner? brother that uh you know that you know why does it feel like there is no news and also all the news at once and there was there was the thing where Trump tried to woo a German company into giving the US exclusive rights to a potential vaccine that that happened what like like a year ago? Did the, did, 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 did the election happen? I, I don't know. Now the ambassador to Germany is saying that isn't true, but also the EU sure did also go after this company. And like, like there's, there's, just, there's just so much information flying around like a food fight of hard turds. That it's difficult to get a handle on anything, which is why if you keep digging, the KPAX website leads to Jeff Bridges' personal website that he's had up for like a decade. And there's a guest book on there that anyone can post in that goes back to like 2004 and is filled with a combination of like Starman fans and complete weirdos. And like, like, why not spend all your time going through those posts, you know? Here's a post that simply says, Jeff, you are a dildo. That... That's fun, right? What, 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 what else? Oh, oh, here's one about the diversity of God's creation that is, it's, it's just about how we shouldn't mix races. In, in the Jeff Bridges message board that we linked to from the KPAX website, here's another 1,000 word post about full blown on Nazi stuff. Because on the internet, there are Nazis and, and not on the internet everywhere. Nazis on the Jeff Bridges message board. Can't get away from all the Nazis. The Nazis don't abide. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how the quarantine has been going for me. It's been, uh, it's been a little rough. The primary seems bleak. Everyone's voting for the guy who's gone eerily silent except to use the moment to blast Trump while his opponent no one is voting for is raising money for relief. And meanwhile, Trump is getting behind all kinds of measures that voters will likely praise. He's suspending evictions and talking about what is essentially universal basic income. And they have this whole relief package offering paid sick leave and free health care and unemployment benefits. And while they aren't good enough, most people won't notice. So like... You can't help but to laugh and cry at the same time watching the GOP seemingly adapt all the stuff Bernie Sanders has been talking about his whole life for this one pandemic emergency and how by doing that, they might actually get Trump reelected. And that's, that's, that's depressing, but maybe also to think of it in a, um, good way. This brief moment in which America dabbles with socialism and suspends standardized testing and the homeless are just moving into empty houses because why the f not in this window of time where ICE is saying that until this is over, they're only going to do crucial arrests. And we have to wonder what the hell they were doing before only doing crucial arrests. When we're realizing how crucial minimum wage workers and doctors and scientists are, and when airlines are like, actually, you can bring more liquid on the plane, it's not a big deal. And jails are like, well, actually, we can just let 
non-violent offenders out. That's just that's just a thing we could always do in this terrible pandemic made worse by racism and an administration that was horribly unprepared. Maybe the good that will come is that average Americans will realize that all these rules put in place and designed to keep the disenfranchised down. They were all completely arbitrary to begin with. And the only reason the powerful weren't allowing us access to a universal basic income or free health care or any of these things progressives talk about, it wasn't because it was logistically impossible, but rather just something they didn't want to do. And now that the cat is out of the bag... Maybe it won't matter who wins the next election. Maybe historians will see this as the catalyst to a growing political change in the country. And I don't know, Trump is pretty dumb. So um, maybe when the virus is gone, we can all just pretend like we all still have it. And he'll keep giving us these things like like we get we get all the doctors and shit in on it. Give them all Nintendo switches in exchange for notes saying we're all sick. We all get doctor's notes. Show them to Trump. I don't know. It's not a perfect plan. But that's hope, I guess. Again, it's... It's pretty bad out there. And you should be angry. And we should remember who screwed us over during this. But also, the people who went above and beyond. Not to mention that over in China, they are actually seeing an end to the virus. And it's something to hold on to. I mean, keep in mind that this is... It's going to take a while, and the virus will likely come and go in waves, and we have to accept that normality will not come quick, or at all in a lot of ways. China's doing better now, Italy still isn't doing great, and that balance will probably keep shifting, possibly to America, if we don't take this seriously. We just have to stay indoors, wash your hands, keep a safe distance, keep calm, be compassionate, still connect with people, let the birds and shit have the cities for a while. At least pollution is down, right? And in Italy, they're even seeing the wildlife return. Do we, do we, do we have a clip of that? Yeah. Some kind of cute goose or shy baby fox to end on. Let's do that. Let's push all the badness aside, shove it right down the poop drain with the rest of your bad thoughts and your content contaminated car keys, and your food, and just enjoy the innocence of nature. Forget the bad. We're gonna be okay. Cinghiali a Chieti, ragazzi. Per il coronavirus. Oh, sorry, I dropped my food so I missed the clip. I'm sure it was really cute and not something that would snap my already thin tether to reality. Do we want do we want to run it again or I am actually alone here. Okay, anyway, have a good spring break. Hey everybody, thank you for watching. Things are different now, and this is how we're gonna be doing things for a while, but we're not going anywhere, we are here for you, and this is temporary, just like the situation we're all in. So, I guess like and subscribe or whatever, but uh, we love you very much. Wait, even more news! You want me to mention the podcast, don't you? <laughs>